I know you're a Suzuki teacher, mm. and there are so many teaching methods in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the market. So uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about your background. Okay, so I, well, my, my, my mom tried to get me started when I was fairly young, around seven. And we continued for a few years, but I just, I was not disciplined. And so after a while, I think my parents, they just, I was so uh, hard to deal with, so they just let me stop. <laughs> um, and I kind of just gave up on music for, for a while. Later on, um, stupid reason, but I was in high school, I was 14, not very good at sports. So I said, I, I better do something to get girls to like me. So I started, you know, trying to get back into piano. That's always the reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. That was the original motivation. Okay. And so, yeah, I was involved in jazz band, um, choir, almost anything I could musically. Um, continued on, um, mostly self-taught, uh, along with my mother's guidance. And then later went to University of Houston, uh, got a music degree from Moore School of Music, um, Graduated in 2012. I uh, worked for a few different music studios at first, and then now have been uh, teaching privately here in Katy. So you major in perform performance? Or? Uh, actually, just a, a Bachelor of Arts in Music. Ah, okay, all right. Yes, ma'am, kind of very general. Do you remember when you were young and you, you, you took your first piano lessons, and are they, is a Suzuki the methods or just regular? I, I think whenever I started, it was just regular. Okay, mm. and what end up you decide you want to go kind of a little, a little bit different route than what you had learned? Well, I, I remember whenever I was growing up, what was so frustrating is, you know, it's all about just reading. You read first, then play. Read first, then play, which is good, but it's very slow. Mm -hmm. And so especially for a boy, you just get very, very frustrated, especially if you want to move and do something. So... Whenever I was working for a music studio at um, the time, they used Suzuki method. And I thought that was very interesting how you can quickly teach people to, to play mm -hmm. first. That was what I thought was the, the strong point of Suzuki, mm -hmm. just getting to play quickly. Right, because I see the like, young kids uh, around mm -hmm. two years old, and you can see his fingers yeah. just like flying across <laughs> the entire keyboard. <laughs> but, um, and so, in your teaching methods, what is the biggest challenge like when doing your mm -hmm. teaching career and all that? What is the biggest challenge to you? Well, at first, it's Suzuki, the strong point is playing quickly, learning to use your muscles. That's very good. The, the downside is sometimes they can be too focused on just playing and then not being able to read at mm. all. Mm -hmm. So in the future, if you just give them a piece of music and say, hey, play this, well, sometimes it can be difficult. So at the beginning, it's just trying to have a good balance of playing and you know, education on, on sheet music, mm. uh, learning the notes, then learning, the, um, learning about chords, learning about scales, all these kinds of things. Uh, that, that's probably the, the biggest challenge in the first year. When you get into year two and year three, uh, the biggest hurdle that we, I have to get over is trying to find ways to keep um, students interested. You know, right. uh, That's always the biggest challenge, <sighs> yes. And how do you make kids and, or your students interest and stay in, continue taking lessons? Well, I, or loving music? Yeah. I think a bigger thing, I would like to say that I can be the deciding factor, but I think in the end it's, it's mom and dad. Um, if, you know, from the beginning, you know, mommy and daddy, they're sitting in the lessons, um, whether the, mom, the parents have a music background or no, if they can sit in, kind of get educated themselves, then at home they can encourage the kids. And I think that in the end that's going to be right. what decides if they can continue. Yeah, because I, 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 I know a lot of parents, they, at the beginning, they encourage the kids. And then at the end, it's like they don't talk to each other. <laughs> it's they, they like over-encouraged mm. or 
there's become like, oh, you got to practice, you got to practice 30 minutes, an hour, yeah. you know, things like that. But how do you see, you know, if how parents can treat, can, can um, the attitude um, to help their kids to mm -hmm. really loving the music mm -hmm. and not just because of, oh, I have to practice that yeah. kind of, but definitely you have to practice. How, what, do you have any words to parents and kind of, uh, kind of share with the parents and um, how to help their kids mm -hmm. to loving music and, but not too strict? <laughs> yeah, I, I think telling your kids to, to practice for 30 minutes, 45, that's not wrong. Um, Whenever I, I have the first meeting with students, I tell them that they need to be practicing not seven days a week, because they'll get burnt out that way, but you know, five to six days a week. That's, that's good. But then outside of that, you know, just if your kid's playing a song that you like, just tell them, ooh, I like, I like this piece. I like what you're playing there. Um, just to, that can be nice for the kid to know, hey, what I'm playing, you know, other people are enjoying that. Or... Or even, you know, in a, a gentle way saying, oh, you know, that, that's, that doesn't sound so good. Are you, are you playing that part wrong? Even just showing that you are invested um, in their education, I think, can be a big deal. I, I can share from my personal experience that both my parents were very supportive. Um, you know, of course, my mom, who's musical, but even my dad. So he would say, hey, I like that piece that you're playing. Do that one again. Or... If I wrote a song, he would, you know, hey, can you play that song for me again? Ooh, that's nice, but maybe, maybe add one more verse. That that really helped me keep going. Right, because that kind of stimulate your your yeah. brain work and see. Well, that's that's good. I I reach to one uh, goal. Yeah. Now I'm, I want to reach you know to another one and just keep going. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, it, it would take a while for a kids to really know they love music, mm -hmm. you know, not just because parents say, oh, you got to, to play, <laughs> and at the end, it's always um, not a good result, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, um, in Suzuki, I know Suzuki Methods, um, they're all emphasizing the finger practicing and all mm -hmm. that. Do you think by listening the music and it's more important than reading the music and play or just memorize the music and play. Which one, what you feel you support? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a tough question, Maggie. Um, I, I, maybe this is the too diplomatic answer, but I think both are important. I mean, you have, I mean, it's music, it's right. listening. You have to use your ear. So, of course, you know, making sure you're always, you know, trying to listen to the sound um, and then change it depending on what you hear. But then, you know, just becoming literate to, to read sheet music, I and mean, that opens up so many, you can be so much more independent. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, they're both important. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So, so you read music first, you memorize it, mm -hmm. then you can... Um, have a feeling, you know, express the feeling through the piece, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then that kind of translate the piece better. Right. So it's, you, you think it's ev everything has to be. Yeah, I think they can they can be mutual together. Yeah, that's good. Yes, okay. So he, so Caleb, he is more focused on on this this Jesus Christ disciple. Should to give him this thing, and he he is focused on this. And then the other side. 他也是 piano teacher， 然后他 teach Suzuki 的教法。Mm -hmm. 那因为钢琴教学，它有很多种嘛。那一个就是雅马哈的，一个就是 Suzuki， 然后一个就是普通传统的教学这样。Mm -hmm. 那他是比较 focus 在 Suzuki 的教学方法。那 Suzuki 的教学方法呢，他是比较重视在手的弹、听力这样子。然后 versus 那个雅马哈或者其他的是不一样的。这个就是说，哎，这个我们刚刚有在谈到它的不同处，这样子，嗯、所以 Caleb 就是专中专于这样子的一个一个领域，对不对？嗯哼，嗯哼，对。And, and I'll say that with、um, going back to Suzuki， 嗯、um, ，所以因为我们有一句话，呃、uh, ，Take the corn, toss the cob， 
所以 Suzuki 我很喜欢那个练耳朵、练手。对。Um, 但是吃玉米、扔玉米心 ，I I think the thing with Suzuki is I try to. They don't teach very good on on reading, so you always have to come back and use some other methods like music tree, or or maybe Trinity, or even maybe Bastion to teach the actual reading. But you know, I think right now the newer you know Suzuki methods actually they're getting much better. That would be Emphasize good. Emphasize on the sight reading. That would be good. Right. Yeah. Because it. Suzuki 的好处就是他们小孩子可以谈得很很，你看他们好像像 pro 一样，可是他们到了一个程度的时候，他读那个读读谱很慢的，因为他不常读谱嘛，他就是练然后 memorize 这样子，所以所以说这就是 Suzuki 的不好处就是等等。那现在 Suzuki 新的我听说已经开始在 emphasize， 就像你，嗯，你也 emphasize 在 side reading 方面 ，because you know that's that's what Suzuki lack of。You know the side reading, 但是你就，你要 focus emphasize 在那个上面。所以他们叔叔给出来的这个教法出来的学生呢，如果在 side reading 他加强的话，他是 very very powerful 的。嗯哼。Because the way they play, it's much different than the traditional teaching, you know, skill. And then they also listen, so they can actually listen the 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 song, and then they can just play. 嗯哼。是吧？嗯哼，呀，如果他们最近有更强调呃那个食谱方面，那多么的好，这样会比较啊，就是读读读谱啊，食食谱，食谱 recipe 啊，对读谱，如果他们更强调嗯读谱这方面，那太好了，这样会比较对嗯平衡对。因为我有，我有跟几个叔叔级的老师，我们都有在聊天。